Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. And I encourage everyone out there to check out his YouTube channel, Sentence Home. You can also find his story on YouTube. There's a PBS special about um, Cambodian deportees. And you guys know I wear my heart on my sleeve, man. And I can't even lie. I, I, it was really hard to fight back tears when I, was, when I was watching that. So I hope you guys are inspired by his story. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Loon Loon. How are you, my friend? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate Good, I appreciate you joining the program and let everyone know where you are from, where you are right now. Uh, right now I'm in uh, uh, the province. We call it Phrae Vang. It's about uh, three uh, about two hundred and ten kilometer from the city, the main city. So because of my little girl, she got so sick, I had to come in the middle of the night after my wife got off work about. Say five o'clock, so we we head out, and it's about three hour ride and a scooter. It's, oh wow! You know, it's really dangerous. A three hour ride on a scooter, dang. Yes, me and my wife. Wow, man, wow. Scooter. And is this the same? Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong for this, but is this the same woman who was in the uh, the special that I saw about you with your kids? No, no, no. This is a different one because uh, you know we we separate. We, mm -hmm. you know, she she went her way, I went mine. So you know, here life is is hard. You gotta try to live what you can in order to survive. You know. Yeah, I hear you, my man. Yeah. Well, well before we get into your background, I would love to know about your channel. I'm very intrigued, especially in times like this with dealing with coronavirus and everyone taking their own life by their hands and making a way and making something happen. I'm very excited about your, your um, YouTube channel. Can you let everyone out there know, you know, what made you start your channel? Yes. Uh, the channel that I, I had is a sitting home channel. It's based on a, a PBS documentary mm -hmm. that's 20 years ago. I'm here. And, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, I just want to continue for everybody to know that I'm here now. I try to live what I can. And, uh, you know, even though the coronavirus and the job is really bad, but as for, for me, I, I try to uh, keep keep things straight, my mind straight. Uh, you know, because uh, a lot of people, I think that a lot of people want to follow and know what am I doing now because it makes like 20 years now. So what I did is I, I did a uh, couple of uh, uh, video that maybe some some uh, uh, the tuber they they seen that hopefully they like that so it's it's just a continuing brother yeah so twenty years later you, you're you're you want to let everyone know what you've been up to that's actually that's that's brilliant and I'm glad that you did that um, and once again for anyone who doesn't know it is a PBS special and I believe it was you were deported in 2002 is that correct. Yeah, two thousand two. I got deported. Okay. Well, yeah. I want, before we uh, before we even get there, because I want to kind of build up to that, but I want that to be you know the main topic of our conversation. But um, I would like to go back even more just to give my audience an understanding of you know where you come from and what it was even before you. Um, but to the best of your knowledge, what were the events in Cambodia that led to so many Cambodians fleeing to America in you know the early eighties? Uh. Basically, you know, we were just young little little kids, and uh, this is what my mom and dad told me when I was growing up. And the genocide happened between I, I figure about seventy nine around there, seventy five to uh, seventy nine. Mm -hmm. And the war is really bad in Cambodia. I, I was just a little kid, uh, you know. Everybody getting killed by uh, Pol Pot regime, the Khmer uh, Khmer Rouge. So. And in order to escape that, my parents and uh, my sibling, they had to cross the border to Thailand to escape the persecution of uh, the Khmer Rouge. And after that, we went into what we call like a, we went to another uh, third world country that's, that's, you know, went into Thailand. So we stayed there. I have no uh, recollection, but, uh, you know, we stayed there until 
we got a, a sponsorship from, uh, you know, like the, the, the church people that sponsor us to uh, America. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we did the traveling. I guess, you know, we uh, landed in the Philippines, Hawaii, Honolulu, and then to the States. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I, that, that's what my mom and dad told me. It's, it's what I can remember. Mm-hmm. And you landed, you, your home was Seattle, correct? Uh, first, we landed in uh, San Francisco. But the church people, they live in Washington State, Seattle. So that's uh, where they they said, okay, since they're in Seattle, Tacoma is closest to Seattle. That's that's where I stay at in Tacoma. Mm. It's only about 30-minute drive to Seattle. Yeah. Okay. And from what I understand, there's a big population of uh, Cambodians in Seattle as well, correct? Yes, sir. Yep, yep. There's a big population, yep. Okay. What were uh, some of the hardships that you remember, you know, being a, uh, an immigrant in a new land? Well, you know, I can't speak the language. That's mm-hmm. that's hard. Yeah, I, you know, we eat different. Mm-hmm. Uh, the culture is different. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the tradition, the clothing, and all that stuff. You know, we the cold. We don't know if it's snowing or not because we don't have snow in Asia. Oh. <laughs> So yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really hard, and it, it, you know we just have to adapt, adapt on whatever. Because uh, everybody, like me, myself, a couple of, uh, Cambodian friends that I have when we were growing up, we were always calling. Uh, they call us Chink because they don't know Cambodian, Laos, or or Thai, or you know mm-hmm. everybody is a Chink to uh, to uh, uh, to the kid at school. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okay, so that yeah, that was, that was kind of hard because uh, probably our eyes kind of planted or something. I don't know. <laughs> now, yeah, it's hard. Okay. Now, did you grow up in a good neighborhood, a, a bad neighborhood? I I grew up in a bad neighborhood. We call it a hilltop. Oh yeah, hilltop yeah. community. I yeah oh, yeah, that okay. was a bad neighborhood. Oh, I interviewed yeah. a couple of cats from hilltop. Okay. Yeah yeah, I grew up there. And I, I think I'm probably about seven years old when my mom went to uh to uh the grocery to get some grocery and she got robbed. I was a little kid. I didn't know what to do. Uh, mm. Trying to get my mom to run, but you know what can you do? You're just a little kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, interesting. I, I live in the hilltop. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Now, I know a lot of down here in L.A. and Long Beach specifically, where I grew up, um, a lot of uh, kids who hit the street, you know, you know, may have joined gangs or whatnot. They did it, I guess, to form together to defend themselves against, you know, the black kids, the Mexican kids. Um, Is that safe to say that that's how it was up in Tacoma as well with with the Cambodian homies? Yes. It's the same all the way through because, uh, you know, as I growing up there, we get harassed by, you know, I'm not no gang or whatever. I was just a little kid. So we get harassed by these older kids on the hilltop area. It's mainly, mainly uh, uh, black, black people and a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of black and a couple of Mexican family that uh, they, I didn't understand what is a blue or red. So man, I just see them wear a lot of blue. So I didn't know about that. So, you know, I got beat up all the time at going to school. Me and my little sister got off the, the bus. I got beat up. And, and, you know, the house, some of the house got robbed. We didn't know what they were doing. So as we growing up, we, we, we tend to, uh, uh, you know, to the Asian community, you know, like the Cambodian, the kid I grew up with, right? So, so after that, I just like, okay, we got to uh, defend themselves. 
as a uh, my my friend, couple of my friends. That's how yeah, that's how we came. Yeah, mm-hmm. same as uh, in in California. Same. Okay. Okay. Now we'll fast forward a little bit, because um, like I said, I want to build up to to your experience being deported back home. Not necessarily your younger years, but this is one of the. This is a big story that part of your story that is the reason why you are in Cambodia now. But uh, in 1995, you shot a gun in a mall parking lot, trying to get away from rival gang members. Um, can you explain what happened that day? Yeah, I still remember it till today. Uh, I'm probably I'm probably about 17 years old. Me, me and the homie. So we went to the mall, right? We went to the mall. Uh, this is not a hilltop uh, gang. Lakewood gang. Lakewood. They call themselves Lakewood Hustler. Rip. So we went to the mall. Me and uh, my buddy went to the mall. We, we don't want any trouble with nobody. We just want to go check out some clothing and, you know, get the, the stuff and get out. That's it. So by we walking, just two of us, I, you know, they, they came through, there's about two or three of them, they came through, they talk, we talk a little bit, and we don't want any problem in the mall, so we said, okay, you know, well, what do you guys want to do? We can go outside better than do it inside, we can fight, you know? So, after that, a lot of them came through, there's now, there's about 10 Including the girl, you know, that's about 10, 15 of them came to us. Damn. And one of the guys, one of, you know, we were teenage, one of the teenage kids, uh, he pulled up his shirt, then there's a, a silver, oh yeah, I think a, a chrome, it's a chrome, uh, what it's called, it's like a, a, a revolver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we like, okay, I told my buddy, hey, we got to go, man. We can get shot up in here. So yeah, they they start chasing us inside the mall. We we couldn't figure out where uh where the exit was. We we were you know we kind of scared. There's so many of them. We we scared. Mm-hmm. Not kind of scared, but we scared. Mm-hmm. We're just a bunch of kids. They're just a bunch of kids. You know, just two of us, and we didn't know any better, so we ran. And uh, all of a sudden, just stuff just went wrong after that. And my buddy just pulled out and just started blasting. And, you know, it just went bad from there. Mm. Damn. And that landed you with an 11-month sentence, correct? Yes. Okay. 11-month sentence. Is that jail or prison? Uh, They gave me, uh, they said, okay, they're trying to give me like a a year and a day. And my lawyer said, well, you take the plea bargain because we don't know what what he's trying to say to us. He said, okay, you take the plea bargain, you, we give you a, a year. If I take uh, a day, that means I go to I go to prison. So I, I take the plea bargain. So I said, okay, you know, probably a year is good for me. I learn my lesson, get out, and you know, I do good with the community. As a, so, yeah, I took, I took a 11-month sentence. See the city bus. She don't want to ride the city bus. Because she's new to the town, I advise Look for truth, the ears are lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud, dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash, I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up, I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah 
Most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blame instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to baby, that's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about baby, just sit your ass Damn. You wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather, maybe we cut a rug Drinking and driving on the low key, rum in the jug Give me a hug, wrong nigga baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning Won't remember shit, I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Ready, ready, set, go. go Put your seatbelt on, up and away, we about to go The road is gonna get windy, promise not to lose control The final destination's bound to captivate your soul And so, many MCs inspired to be One of the baddest motherfuckers to touch the MIC Then the law came life, now the dreams deferred All the years of writing rhymes captured in a blur My ponders contemplating the worst Put all your energy into the music, now you're looking for thirst to be quenched Paying dues upon dues Keep on telling yourself I'ma make it Others believe in you too When it's true You can make it if you try There's levels to everything Better believe it Cause you can deny it And never achieve it It won't come easy Just put in the work And know your worth Continue to rise Cause all we do is capitalize None of these drugs Do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point Of hurting people That you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. But what's it like for an Asian dude entering jail? Well, uh, you know, as Pierce County is a small city, I mean Tacoma is a small city. So when I was in, as I was booking to jail, you can hardly see a lot of Asians. You always see a lot of uh, black, Latino, and white. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of scary because I was about 17 years old. I didn't know any better. So uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, to the adult now, to adult sentencing. So, yeah, it's it just I don't see uh, Asian people. So, yeah, I was kind of, I was scared, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, damn. I don't know what's going on, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you get out. You're doing good. You did your time. You did the crime. You did the time. You did good. You, you know, didn't have any situations. You were being a great community member. And then eight years later, due to certain changes in immigration law, uh, you basically got a, a notice that you were going to be deported to Cambodia, right? <clears throat> Uh, that's, uh, the first notice, I, I don't have anything. I just say this because, uh, you know, if my ex-wife is watching, I don't know if she's watching or not, but it started because of my, my ex-wife, she wanted to come visit her grandma. And the rumor I heard from everybody else is like, the law has been changed. So you got to be careful if you go into a, I, they would call it INS back in the day. So... A lot of a lot of old people, the client old people, they say, "Look, you got to be careful. The law has been changed." But you know, I don't believe them. I was busy working because I got a family to support. I didn't believe them because uh, my wife she said, "Okay, we need to go get our citizenship, my citizenship, right?" Because she already got her. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, I keep on telling her, I say, uh, you know what, I got a bad premonition about going there because, you know, if I, if something go wrong because a lot of old people say the law changed, I, we might have to believe them. My ex wife, she persisted for me to go. So, you know, because her grandma is over here in Cambodia, I also, in my mind, I do want my citizenship, but in the back of my head, it's like, uh, if you go, you can get caught. Because even though it's seven or eight years, if the law change, it, it, I don't think it ma- really matters, you know? So anyway, we went. We went. We went. We, we take the, I took the test. I figured I passed it. And the, the INS agent that, that, that interviewed me for the citizenship, he said, okay, you know, just wait out here for a while because I already did the test. So yeah, I waited about 40 minutes. I sit there and wait with my family and wait. And then uh, he said, okay, uh, can you come up to the counter? So we walked to the counter and then he said, okay, uh, can you wait for a minute? Okay, we wait another 30 minutes. Mm. And at 30 minutes up, he said, okay, can you come up here, please? So I went up. I turned around. Here's a Seattle police officer in the back. And then he said, uh, you under arrest. I said, under arrest? What, I, what did I do wrong? And, you know, it, it, the policeman, he didn't know. He's like, they called me to come and arrest you. So what, what is going on? And then the INS officer explained to me, he said, you got your uh, INS that, I, you know, it's been eight years, the law been changed, now they're deporting Cambodian back, and you're on the list. And that's when my heart sank. My heart thing. I look at my wife, my uh, my two little girls. Uh oh, that's mm. it. That's it. I got you know I got arrested because the police officer he don't know. He just there to arrest me. He you know he feel like he said I'm just doing my job. You know he looked kind of sad for me. I'm like oh oh that's it. Mm. That's that's my life. You know now I'm here. Yeah. As the time goes by and the earth rotates We gon' fly high up to outer space yeah. And we will never fall down I'm one with the universe, call me the sound The bass booming in your speaker With the microphone I possess, it's a heater You better drop it, let go You can't touch my beats or my flow Nigga, Kevin Smith my name But not the director, we ain't the same, man I'm a pimp by nature Inside of me is a God, the creator Pursuing my dreams Cause anything is possible You know what I mean I wanna live comfortable But gotta be clean But working every day From nine to five in my thing. I feel like a trap Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble one by one we start to subtract them Separate facade from who really bought that action Feel like I'm trapped In the room without a key Full wall surrounding me Stripping my identity Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive Take away my culture and my nationality Talking about double jeopardy and yeah. Double standard to killing my folks Like it don't even matter And when we gather Disgusted by the charades Bullets spray the crowd Target practice in the game No accountability So who bears the blame They want to see us violent To justify the change Back to how it used to be Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel this heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For I awareness I feel like a trap Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble 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 
Stop, let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this and hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified and made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it have a purpose When he smiles they don't really know what's under the surface I'm a product of pain, racism, and cocaine I never tooted once but it's all of my veins That shit is all of my genes, see? It's my destiny This is nothing new kid, I'm just an old recipe A boring story that you've heard hundreds of times Blah blah blah, wham wham wham, hate my life And my parents both suck, I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, I done that I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Explain to everyone the, the process you went through, the deportation process. Okay. Uh, I got tough. They took me down there. And uh, my wife was upstairs for a minute, and then they took my wife and kids downstairs, you know, just to say goodbye, get my belonging from the pocket or whatever I got in my oh, pocket. Oh, so it's right away? Is this, oh, is this a week later, or is this right away? Uh, it's just that day. That <sighs> day. What? Yeah. Whoa. That day. Sorry, I didn't catch that part. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, wow. it's that day that when the police cuffed me, and then they took me downstairs, <clears> and then, uh, you know, they... They started doing the process, and then my wife came up, all pick up all the car key, the money I got, you know, the the driver license or whatever I got. Mm. But they they did not want me to uh, leave the INS, uh, uh, what do you call it, a Social Security card. Mm. They want that, so they they say, okay, you can take his ID, but leave the Social Security card there. Mm. So yeah, I I was there, I was getting booked. They get me into change into a, a orange clothing. Or uh, jumpsuit. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, me and my wife, we talk. And, you know, I feel so bad to see that she's just sitting there crying her eye out. The baby crying, mm. she's crying, and I don't know what to do. Like, uh, uh, okay, you know, it's best that you go home. Let me deal with this. I'll give you a call when the process is over. So after that uh, 30 minute we talked, I just told her to go home because you know, there's no reason for her to sit there and look at me. I'm in the cage, she's outside. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so she, she went home and I got processed. And uh, like an, two hours later, they sent me back upstairs to the top floor. That's where I knew it, like all kind of, uh, you know, ethnic background, you know, like, uh, Pakistan, you name it, everybody there. Mm. You know, then, I'm like, oh my God, now I'm here. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what the process was, and mm. there's nothing I can do. I just have to uh, deal with it. Get on the phone, call up my wife, and say at this time, this time, or this uh, a day, it's a uh, visiting hour. You know, so you can come visit me at this day, at this time. Mm. Yeah. Wow. How did the um, how did the PBS documentary get involved? Well, uh, from my point of view, it, it, you know, they seen that. Uh, you know, from my understanding, they were based in uh, Boston, I guess. So they heard about me that uh, through with the lawyer that that helped try to help me out, or you know, he he helping whatever he can through him and they came through with, uh, uh, they wanted to, uh, uh, record me because, uh, my case is, uh, they call it special case because it was under the rug about eight years. And then all of a sudden it just, it, it came to light mm-hmm. because of, of, I wanted to get the citizenship. 
so yeah, uh, they heard it through my lawyer, and then they wanted to uh, to record all the uh, what, uh, why am I in there and stuff like that. Yeah. Do they just take you straight to um, from the U.S. straight to uh, Cambodia, or do you make any stops? Oh, they. I was there. I was there for like uh, in INS in Seattle. I was there like three months. Okay. Uh, you know my recollection. Yeah. Damn. And then within that three months, you know, they change you around. You know, like they they put me in, uh, they changed me to Kent Regional Justice Center, and then and Federal Way, and then after that they they send me back to uh, INS, the, the, the headquarters in Seattle, and then you know, until they found out that they 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 trying to get a document from Cambodia so I can get travel back to Cambodia. So within that three month or so, you know. They they doing a uh, they call it a due process so they can get all the documents in Cambodia, and uh, so I can travel back. And like I said, within three months, they shipped me to uh, to California, hmm. to uh, Arizona. You know, just to get trying to get to the consulate. Hmm. It's any consulate that's close to it. So yeah, uh, I went to uh, the last. Stop that I had made. It was uh, Arizona. That's the last stop. Okay. Damn. <clears throat> now, when you got to Cambodia, you also had to spend time in a detention center there, correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. It was a month I had to spend there. Okay. Tell and, me about what's it like you know, in a what's it like in a Cambodian detention center? I mean, I could imagine, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the place is super dirty. Hey, you know, the fan, there's a small little fan, and then you got the ceiling fan, and there's uh, seven of us. Damn. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the place is so small. It's about four by six. One bathroom, a squatting uh, toilet tree, and a uh, shower is in the toilet. Mm. And and there's no toilet paper, no plumbing. Really bad. Uh, it's just yeah, it's just so, uh, it's just so bad. The mosquito, and then you have this uh, cockroach so big. Oh man! You know it's the size of your uh, thumb. Oh, they can fly around, wow. and then you got the little gecko climbing on the wall, <laughs> oh, pooping all over you when you're sleeping. And then the the worst part is the mosquito. Oh, it's just so bad about the mosquito. Man. When you wake up in the morning, your whole hand is all red. You thought you got chicken pop, but it's not. It's a mosquito bite. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, now, this is probably a weird question, but, you know, when you're younger and kids idolize, you know, certain uh, people, were you seen as, I know, like a folk hero to – Anybody back in Cambodia, any of the young, you know, thugs or, or street kids? Well, uh, I didn't want to uh, really go into that with them because I just, it's, it's better for me just to stay back and, you know, just just relax and think about the family and that's it. I, I don't want them to know where I'm coming from. If, if you know, the kid, if I told them, Everybody start no, and then it's going to be just a blown out of proportion, and that'll make me worry because I'm here by myself. Mm. I got no support. Only family I got is my wife, a little bit of support from my immediate, uh, you know, like my brother and sister. Because other than that, you know, I just keep it to myself, stay at home. Sit. Mm. I try to keep everything just calm. Yeah, because they they doing a test on us. You know, it's like. It's like a guinea pig. If it works out, they bring more people. So the best thing I did was just to uh, stay in the house and not let people know who I was. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just lay low, man. Yeah. If you can name one thing, what was the hardest thing about adapting to living in Cambodia after living in America all your life? Uh, it's like a reverse when I went to America and now it's the worst that I came back to Cambodia. <laughs> it's the worst because the culture now, because we got the culture from the state now, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
and we eat like pizza stuff like that. But here they eat different. They eat like fresh stuff. You know, like uh, the fish is fresh. The chicken run around got killed. It's fresh. <laughs> the clothing is different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the clothing, the talking. Uh, now basically, because I didn't talk Cambodian that well, that's a, a problem for me. And then it's the uh, the reading and the writing because I don't know how to read Cambodian. All right, that's a big problem. If you're trying to get by, get a job, it's so hard to, to do that. So yeah, that, that's the that's the main problem. It, it's just a, a culture shock for me to get back here with all that. Um, if I can give you any advice, it would be to continue doing your YouTube channel. Um, you know, just just a little over a year ago, I myself had less than a thousand subscribers. It took me forever to get to a thousand subscribers, wow. but you know, fast forward a wow. year, fast forward a year with consistency, yeah. I'm at twenty two thousand subscribers, and thankfully, I'm making money yeah. on this now. And I just want yeah. to encourage you to keep doing this as much as you can. If you could do it every day, do it every single day, bro. Even if it's just a story, like just anything, a story about your past, a story about what you're going through now, maybe a story of you walking through your city. This is the people want content right now because everyone is at home, you know, yeah. watching this. So this is the perfect time, my brother, to turn it up, you know, a notch, turn it up times five, you know, whatever you're doing right now, turn it up times five. You know, especially if you have the, the time to do it, I, 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 I promise you, you will see the, the, the rewards if you keep at it in six months to a year, you will see the rewards, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because you have something. Do that. You have Thank a you unique. So you have a unique story. It's a very unique story, and I'm telling you, man, just keep at it. And if there's anything I can do to help you, you know, um, I, I've been doing YouTube now, like I said, for a couple of years now, so I, I know uh -huh. all the ins and outs. I've made all the mistakes. So if you ever have any advice, you know, if you never needed advice, or if you ever say, "Hey, how do I do this?" or "What's the best way to do that?" I'm a text away. You can text me on Instagram. Um, you know, you uh -huh. know, please please pick my brain if you ever need it, bro, because I think. That this could really change your life. Okay. It could really turn your life around. YouTube could turn your life around. I'm serious with that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm proud of you, man. I really um, appreciate that. One more time, his YouTube channel is Sentence Home. S-E-N-T-E-N-C-E-H-O-M-E, -E -E, Sentence Home. I encourage everybody out there to check out his channel. And um, I thank you so much, man. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace.